Vancouver Stadium. Remind you that uh, often Pittsburgh has been referred to as the city of champions over the years. A lot of times that was in reference to the Pirates and the Steelers and then later on the Penguins, but now it can be termed that as well in terms of boxing because once again we have a champion from this area. The IBF lightweight title holder is Paul Spatafora, a title that was won last August down in West Virginia. He's going to be a champion for the next 10 years if he stays in shape. If he doesn't, he's going to do it. Nobody's going to be there. Believe what I tell you. You know, I'll write to you tonight. I'll write to you tonight and tell you. I told you, say the birds fly. Birds fly, baby. The lightweight champion. The champion. The champion. The smiles weren't always as visible, and it didn't always sound this good. And Paul Spatafore is the current IBF lightweight champion of the world with visions of representing his hometown of Pittsburgh as best as he can. The heir apparent to Billy Kahn as the new Pittsburgh kid, Paul is far from many of today's spoiled, overpaid, and undisciplined athletes. He comes from a single parent, one bedroom apartment family that lost a father at a young age. This taught Paul to appreciate everything he earned and worked for. It pushed and motivated him to succeed in life, but most importantly, it opened his eyes to how deep his love runs for everyone left in his family. I have my family to take care of, my mother, my brothers, I, I love them more than anything in the whole world. You know, when I get it, when I walk in that now, I get, so when I even talk about it, I get like, you know what I mean? Because I, I love them. When I get into that ring, it's time to hang, I'm going in the ring with my mom, my brothers, my little nephew, you know what I'm saying? I'm going in there, that's my team and my heart. After his father's death, Paul began searching for his identity and his purpose in life. It was then that he and his brothers, like other teenage boys, got into trouble except their trouble meant fights, running the streets, and gambling with their lives. Now, Paul found himself on a path towards destruction. It was on these streets of McKee's Rocks where a young Paul Spatafora, the current IBF lightweight champion of the world, found himself going nowhere fast and decided something's gotta change. Unfortunately, it was a near-death experience that slowed him down. That night was like a biggest learning experience in my whole life. I was, oh, I, like I told you, that I always loved the fight, but I was gambling with my life. You know, I was messing around, you know, not doing the right things, at the wrong place at the wrong time, with the wrong people sometimes. Sometimes with you just being there, and you get yourself in a bad predicament. It was one night in the corner of McKee's Rocks that Paul's life nearly ended, and a career in boxing wouldn't have been anything but a dream. After a car with Paul and his so-called friends at the time was chased by police, Paul was shot in the leg and lay hospitalized for days. It took this to make him realize he had been blessed with the talent of boxing, but lacked a father figure to fine tune his natural ability. Enter Pittsburgh boxing legend, P.K. Pecora. His trainer, his mentor, but more importantly, that father figure he yearned for. P.K. took him under his wing, trained him, and instilled the discipline, skills, and values that would make Paul the fighter he is today. Unfortunately, he too would pass before seeing Paul's development. PK was like my father. He did everything that my father, if I had a father, would have did for me. He brought me to the gym, made sure I went to the gym. He was always there for me to talk to on the phone. He's the most beautiful person in my life. You know what I mean? I loved him to death. And when I, lo and when I lost him, it taught me a lot. I never miss a day writing to him. I write to him every single night. I got b books, like diaries, just writing to him, letting him know how we're doing, you know, and it ain't just how I'm doing, it's how we're doing. If he was here, he'd be right here, right, riding this with me. Once again, Paul would feel deserted and take another blow to his confidence. Now it was imperative that he work hard, train, and stay focused, thus keeping him off the streets and headed towards the goal that he and PK had set, an opportunity at a title shot. His team of longtime friends, now trainers and managers, continued to vigorously train and support their prospect. We've been friends for about 10 years, uh, but I've trained him on a one-on-one -on -one basis for almost three now. But he, but uh, we, we're, we're close outside the ring. I mean, we go to dinner, we go out sometimes to the movies and shoot pool and go to the, you know, summertime we go to the wave pool and swim. You know, I mean, yeah, we're close friends. This is like a family thing. You know, uh, we're all from Pittsburgh with the exception of Jesse, and Jesse's fit right in with the team. Jesse's a hell of a quality guy. He's a good trainer, but he's a good man, too. And he fits in real well with the team. The rest of the team, we've all been here. Paul had compiled a 26-0 record, earning him a nationally televised title shot on August 20th against the hard-hitting Israel Cardona. But McCulley felt 
He needed a trainer with instinct, someone who trained world champions before, and someone with the ability to get Paul to the next level. This without taking away from the foundation that PK had built. So after evaluating a long list of potential trainers, 